Now, what is the difference between a densely connected layer, this is a feed-forward layer, and a convolutional layer in a neural network? So once again, dense layers are regular feed-forward neural networks. Dense layers learn global patterns in their input feature space. So if we have, let's say, this image of, let's say, by size 28 by 28, then a dense layer or a dense neural network, let's say I have five neurons in the first layer, then each neuron will receive input from each pixel of this image. And, um, and, and same thing applies to the second neuron, third neuron, and so on. Since each neuron gets to see the entire picture, entire picture as input, they have the ability to learn global patterns in the input feature space. Convolutional layers, on the other hand, learn local patterns because say we have a convolutional filter, let's say of size five by five, that can only look at the size window at a time. Then because a convolutional neuron cannot look at the entire image, but can only look at a piece of the image at one time, they can only learn local patterns. These local patterns are found in a small 2D windows of usually size 3 by 3 or 5 by 5. Convolutional neural networks have two very important properties. The first property is translation invariance. What this means is that a convolutional neuron, when they learn patterns, the patterns that they learn are translation invariant. And um, what this basically means is if we have an image, right, and uh, there's a person sitting in this side of the image, and say a convolutional filter learns to recognize this person in this corner of the image, then in the next image, if the same person is sitting somewhere else, in another picture, then CNNs can find that. So translation does not block them or stop them from learning, unlike feed-forward neural networks. And the visual world, you know, is also translation invariant. For example, you don't always have Chicago in your north. You could have it anyway based on how you are oriented, right? And um, so for this reason, to Continue the example, convolutional layer learns a pattern in lower light corner of a picture, and if it does, then it can recognize it anywhere else in the another or the same picture. And this makes convolutes very much data efficient because they can learn more patterns with fewer training samples. So even from the same image, say I have a picture of a person here, and maybe another picture here, I have that of a house, then um, I can understand that the convolutional neuron can learn the house separately and the person from the same picture separately. One convolutional neuron may actually focus on learning houses and it will learn houses in the picture. Another convolutional neuron may focus on learning faces and it may learn faces even from within the same picture. The next property of convolutional neural networks is hierarchies of patterns. They can learn, that is convolutional neural networks can learn hierarchies of patterns. And, and uh, it is, I mean, the, the way they are designed is to actually mimic the visual world. And the visual world is spatially hierarchical. For example, if we have a picture of a cat, then the picture actually consists of um, um, like, you know, semicircles, lines and curves and so on. And um, a cat actually may be broken down into things like eyes, nose, ears, and then these may be further broken down into these very basic low-level features like lines and curves. So each picture is composed of this hierarchy of information. Um, for example, in a convolutional neural network, a first convolutional layer can learn um, a small local pattern such as edges, and then the second convolutional layer can learn larger patterns made of these features and, and so on. So this allows convolutions to efficiently learn increasingly more complex and abstract visual concepts like um, face or even the whole person and things like that. Now let's look at some of the basics of a convolutional layer. So when we say convolutional layer, what we mean is say we have an input image, then 
just like the feed forward neural networks where we have a bunch of neurons in the first layer, a few neurons in the second layer, and so on. We may have in one convolutional layer, maybe one convolutional neuron, another convolutional neuron, another convolutional neuron, and so on. So a bunch of convolutional neurons in the first layer, say L1, and um, another set of convolutional neurons in second layer L2, and so on. Convolutions operate over 3D tensors called feature maps. So convolutions require 3D inputs. I mean, there are 1D convolutions as well, but when we are talking about images, um, we are usually talking about 2D convolutions, and so they require 3D tensors as input. Um, these are known as feature maps. A feature map is um, a 3D tensor with two spatial axes, height and width, and a depth axis, also known as the channels axis. So if you look at this image here, then I can obtain red, green, and blue channel, right? So red, green, and blue channel from this image. And here my image has maybe um, width, height, and here it also has depth, which is also known as the channels of the image. So this is a 3D tensor overall. In case of an RGB image, the number of channels equals three. But in case of a black and white picture, which is a grayscale picture, the depth channels um, is uh, equals to one. That is the depth or number of channels we have is only equals to one. So imagine this whole thing, let's put all of these RGB channels, all of them into a single um, input and let's imagine this as an input volume. Input volume, because we have um, width, height, and depth in our input. Now what one convolutional neuron does, also one convolutional neuron is known as a filter, right? What this filter does is it takes portions of the data, it actually looks at the entire data and responses are like, you know, produces feature map. So from the input feature map, it produces output feature map such that the entire data set goes through this filter piece by piece and comes out with um, um, the, the like an output feature map. So the convolution operation extracts patches from its input feature map and applies the same transformation to all of these patches, producing an output feature map. So it's more like, um, imagine this to be a paintbrush, a paintbrush, a paint brush that goes from one corner, starts painting all the way to the end, and then comes back and keeps painting and finishes painting the entire input feature map and produces output feature map. Now the depth of a feature map can be arbitrary. So if I have only one filter that's doing the painting, I only get one channel as my output. The depth only becomes one. But if I have 10 filters like these, then each filter produces one um, output feature map. So then I get 10 feature maps, 10 layers. So if I only have one filter, then even though I have a 3D input, I will only get a 2D output. But if I have more than one filter, then I also get a 3D output because the last dimension depth is decided by the number of filters I have. So the channels in the depth axis in your output feature map represents the number of filters that you have that you applied to obtain the output feature map.